On August 9, 1945, a young Japanese officer named Yashida is watching from a guard tower at a WWII prison camp close to Nagasaki, Japan, as two B-29 bombs appear over peaceful Nagasaki. Air raid alarms go off, Yashida sounds the alert and quickly leaves his POW camp watchtower. Yashida immediately bursts open jail cells, liberating dozens of captured American soldiers, as other Japanese officers get ready to die. He arrives in a strange-looking prison cell that resembles a tank turret that has been firmly welded over a well, and is tied to the floor as his last stop. Logan is inside, watching as the camp's residents flee for their lives while being suspended by his bone claws. Logan is told to go by Yashida after he has the chains from his cell cut. Each Japanese officer lines up and ritualistically conducts seppuku, but Yashida cannot force himself to pass away right away. Logan halts him as he is getting ready. Yashida eventually witnesses Nagasaki being destroyed by a huge fireball as the bomb from one of the bombers falls. Logan advises Yashida to flee, but Yashida is told to go into the hole instead since he will have a better chance of surviving the nuclear explosion there. When he makes up his mind, Logan follows him into the hole. Yashida is covered by Logan who has taken hold of a metal door. Logan is horribly scorched as a wall of flames engulfs the well a few seconds later, consuming him. Yashida escapes the bombing with only a minor burn to his face, and he horrifiedly observes as the third degree burns Logan sustained to his body heal. Logan wakes up in the present. He and Jean Grey are in bed together when she inquires about his most recent dream. Nagasaki, he answers. It seems like Logan has nightmares every night. As they embrace, Logan declares his unwavering love for her and makes a promise to never hurt another person. Jean declares, it's too late. Logan is shocked to find that his claws are buried in her lower chest and that her abdomen is oozing new blood. In the Yukon cave, Logan wakes up from his dream inside a dream and screams in terror. Logan has led a basic, isolated life since Jean's passing during the X-Men's final stand. He doesn't seem to have taken a bath or shaven in a while, and he appears to live in the woods like a wild animal. The only things in his modest cave are an ancient radio with dying batteries and some empty whiskey bottles. After getting dressed, Logan leaves the cave and makes his way through the countryside to the closest settlement. Along the way, he notices a bear's claw mark on a tree and uses his own claws to cut across it. Soon after, he encounters a massive grizzly bear that appears to be friendly with Logan. A few inebriated hunters are getting ready to head up into the mountains while Logan enters the general store, purchases some batteries, and stands by to observe. They're new, one of the hunters plays around with his hunting rifle and almost shoots off his foot. Logan is irritated. Logan goes back to his cave and falls asleep. When he investigates the sounds of anguish, he discovers that the hunter's camp has been destroyed. He discovers proof of a bear attack. He finds the same bear he had earlier seen with an arrow poking out of its back after following bear footprints in the recently formed mud. The grizzly bear is still alive and suffering greatly. Logan feels compelled to end the bear's suffering after it turns to him with eyes full with tears. Logan removes the arrow from the animal's hide and smells the poisonous point. He stalks into the town and enters the local bar, where he discovers the lone survivor of the hunter telling the story of the attack while being watched by a little, young Japanese woman with red hair. The bear killed his friends, and he was lucky to survive. Logan confronts the hunter and demands to know who used illegally poisoned arrows to shoot the bear, which instead of dying from the poison's too low dose, went on the rampage. Logan continues to accuse the hunter of using arrows with poison tips despite the hunter's denials. Logan shoots the leader in the hand, pinning it to a table, and explains that the arrow was the one he took from the bear's back. If it wasn't poisoned, the hunter shouldn't be concerned. Logan is ready to battle them all as the hunter's pals stand in a line. But Yukio, the red-haired Japanese woman brandishing a samurai sword, convinces him to halt. She mocks the hunters and displays her long, ancient sword, which she calls Danzen, or the Separator, because its main usage is to cut off heads and limbs from bodies. She scares everyone by slicing through the air with the sword, nearly killing the other hunters, and then she departs. With her, Logan drives off in her rental car. Logan inquires as to her identity and the nature of her search for him. 
She reveals that Yashida, whose elderly body is being destroyed by cancer, sent her. Yashida wants to thank Logan for saving his life 70 years earlier before he passes away. Logan is hesitant to travel to Tokyo, but he must fulfill this duty to himself. Flying to Tokyo, Logan and Yukio arrive at Yashida's lavish home. Svetlana Kachinkova, Yashida's American oncologist, and Tao Akimoto, Mariko, Yashida's devastated granddaughter, both reject Logan. They maintain that Logan's primitive condition poses a risk for spreading to the frail, dying Yashida. Logan is forced into a bathtub where he is cleaned up and given a haircut till he looks respectable and less repulsive. Finally given permission to communicate with Yashida, Logan is given the identical sword that Yashida gave to him 70 years prior. Because Yashida thinks his cutting-edge business has the technology to provide him a special opportunity, they can turn Logan mortal and will transfer Logan's life-giving mutation into his own body. He has called for Logan. Yashida's request enrages Logan, who claims that no one should want his authority. He watches as Shinjin, the father of Mariko and the son of Yashida, slaps his upset daughter while pleading with Yukio to fly him home. Mariko, who is devastated, prepares to jump off the nearest cliff, but Logan saves her, upsetting Shinjin. Logan is convinced by Yukio to stay for a few more days, and she finds him a place to stay. Logan has a dream in which Jean gets into bed with him and kisses him. As the dream comes to an end, Jean takes the role of Dr. Green, Yashida's oncologist. Logan's neck is pressed hard by her snake-like tongue, which deposits something there and causes green mist to erupt from his mouth. He cries out and passes out. Logan opens his eyes after hearing noises outside his door. As soon as he leaves, he sees paramedics rushing through the estate. Yashida's body is carried to the entryway a short while afterwards. Shinjin rushes through the funeral preparations as Mariko sobs. Yashida's burial is held in the heart of Tokyo a few days later. Logan enters the funeral procession with Yukio and makes his way through it shakily. Logan is instructed to return home by Shinjin, who is particularly repulsed by him. As they enter the funeral, Logan and Yukio take a place towards the back of the attendees. A lone archer who is there for the ceremony discreetly assures the spirit of Yashida that he will guard Mariko. A pair of priests in traditional attire lead Mariko to the front of the burial. Logan observes the priest's arms, which are deeply inked with what are undoubtedly Yakuza symbols. Infuriating Shinjin, Mariko, and Mariko's distant fiancé Nibiru, Logan abruptly rushes through the gathering. Within seconds, pistols are drawn, and Logan is shot in the chest after spotting a gun-shaped bulge under one of the priest's robes. He is in even greater agony than usual. The priests all remove their robes, exposing their Yakuza tattoos and attire. After seizing Mariko, the Yakuza leave the funeral. Logan follows them closely. He's been wounded several times, and it takes him a lot of effort to regain his strength. He also has terrible trouble recuperating. Dozens of Yakuza members are laid out at the funeral by arrows that fly into the scene. As Logan and Mariko depart the burial temple, the archer Harada kills many Yakuza and pursues them. As the Yakuza pursue him, Logan takes Mariko well into the city. Logan refuses to leave with Mariko despite her best efforts. Logan begs for understanding as they get on a bullet train regarding what had transpired. Mariko says that the reading of her grandfather's will, which would identify her as the next leader of the Yashida Corporation, is scheduled for three days from now. The Yakuza are eager to kidnap her because doing so would require paying a hefty ransom. The scars on Logan's chest are not mending, so he retreats to the train's restroom. Four Yakuza soldiers fire and stab him as he shakily leaves the restroom. Logan strikes back, killing two of the soldiers and tearing a hole in the train's side. Logan and the other soldiers are sucked out onto the side of the train, where they engage in a bullet train fast melee. After defeating the Yakuza, Logan gets back on the train and sits down. Where is Mariko going, he wonders. The end of the line is where her family lives. Logan makes the assumption that there must be Yakuza at their destination if there were any on the train. Mariko concurs, and the two get off the train well before they reach their final stop. Mariko and Logan are looking for a safe neighborhood in the city that she is familiar with when Logan stops her and tells her that they need to find a place to stay where no one will be looking for her. 
Mariko is dragged inside the seedy-looking hotel that Logan finds. It's a love hotel or a place where customers pay by the hour. Logan considers it ideal because the Yakuza wouldn't look there for them. They swiftly ascend to their chosen Mars-themed chamber. Logan keeps watch from the balcony as Mariko rests. He falls asleep while having a Jean dream. When Mariko gets up, she rushes to his aid. Logan wakes up in a veterinary clinic. The hotel manager's son is tending to Logan's wounds. He moves uneasily away from Logan as he stirs and points to the recent cuts Logan has given him on his arms and face. Logan has been stitched up and is in better shape than the previous night, but he is still far from invincible. Dr. Green slips through a sketchy back alley. She receives catcalls from middle-aged perverts who believe her to be a prostitute due to her blonde hair. She grabs him by the collar and spits a green toxin that renders him blind. After moving on through the alley, she comes across Harada waiting expectantly for her. He is irate because she is two hours late. She demands to know the whereabouts of Logan and Mariko. Harada's men are still looking, but Mariko isn't showing up where she usually does. They have fewer than three days to find her, says Green, a mutant who has changed her name to Viper. 